here with MC Lars. How are you? Good. Uh, thanks for talking to us in the middle of this crazy ass rain in October. Yeah. He just played Knitting Factory, last show of your awesomely successful tour. How do you hey. feel, man? I feel good. I feel relief. I feel happy and I'm, you know, it's been great. Yeah. So yeah, I can't wait to do it again. And who, mention the guys who you played with for this tour. We were opening for MC Chris. It was uh, Adam Warrock and Tribe One and K Murdoch and Mega Ran. Nice. Yeah. And, awesome. and your album just dropped last month. Congratulations, Thank right? You. Thank you. Yeah, Lars Attacks. I just put that out on my label Horse Records. Sweet. Yeah. We took a listen to it. Do you feel like your music's changed over this whole period of time since like 2003 you've been doing this, right? Yeah, you know, I think the thing is, if you want longevity, you can't just try to hit the pop culture mark Definitely. and do parody because Definitely. that is that is limited. And so I just, this new album's about spiritual growth and, and karma and rebirth and, and totally. redemption and the power of hip hop to save us all, you know, so it's um it's a different kind of thing. But you know, it's the pop culture stuff's important, but I've kind of like, I'm not so much trying to hit what's cool with the pop culture because yeah. that's hard and it's not satisfying, you know? Definitely. yeah. <laughs> Well, it definitely hits with us and everyone who, oh my god, <laughs> it's like really snowy. Everyone who is on the grind doing the DIY and doing it for themselves and I, I feel like it seems like right now with everything that's going on in the world, it's really time for people to carve out their own path. Sure, because if you are relying on a machine, you know, Karis one has a lyric on my album, he says, the whole system is shaky and unreliable. Uh, national yeah. debt is astronomical, you know, so it's like you can't really trust the machine because the machine's going to screw you over. You sign to a major, you're going to, exactly. 9 out of 10, you'll get dropped, you know, unless you're Justin Bieber, but like no one is Justin Bieber except him. So it's like you got to be... we don't need yeah. more <laughs> You got to make your own machine. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the key to longevity, just being good to your fans, never stopping and putting out good stuff. And then yeah. if you do that long enough and you sacrifice for a decade, you <laughs> potentially yeah. can like have a career maybe doing this. Definitely. So that's cool. Definitely. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about? I feel like artists get stuck with validation from a major label or from you know mainstream success and stuff like that. And if they feel they feel like if they don't have that, that they haven't made it. You know, like what's making it for you? What's success for you? Success is you know if you don't if you can make you know six figures and you don't have a day job and you can do it by touring and, and believing mm -hmm. in yourself, then that's success. You Definitely. know, that's this is the first year we've we've tipped over and made that possible. Awesome. It's really cool. Congrats. Thank you. Definitely. You know, I don't need to do, I don't need to be under someone's wing. I'm my own boss. And yeah. like, I can pick who I work with and go on tour when I want. And it's just a really, it's a blessing. I'm yeah. so blessed to do this. Awesome. So, yeah. And you're an English major, right? Did, yeah. did you, what made you want to do this? Did you have like any crappy jobs out there yeah. or like? It was always just, I was always kind of loved being the center of attention. Oh, you guys doing a picture? No. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> I always loved being the center of attention, and so I... <laughs> Video bomb! Oh, look at this. <laughs> See, this is my crew. Uh-oh. <laughs> Got it? Nice. Nice. That's awesome. All right. Is everyone leaving? Right, what's, what's next for you? You're in a really cool place right now with... Everything that's been happening to you, right? Yeah, everything's good. You know, I'm I'm trying to divide time between being in New York and and being in LA, and I'm I'm working on a book, a history of hip hop, oh, nice. which is which is cool, and so that's hopefully that will come out next year. Doing a kids album, also doing a liter oh literary album. That's really cool. Edgar Allan Poe EP. Yeah, a lot of stuff. You know, and the goal is to launch a kids hip hop show. That's my plan cool. for next year. TV show. Or? Yeah, TV show. Nice. So, All right, we're going to look out for that. Yeah, that's the plan. That's awesome. So Last cool. thing, what do you know now that you wish you knew back then when you were starting? I think it goes to what you're saying about validation. You know, I've always, you know, when I first started, I would compare myself to the acts that I used to tour with when I started, like Gym Class Heroes and Say Anything. Yeah. And I saw them, you know, become huge, mega successful bands. I was like, what's up? Like, why? is this taking a while but it's like yeah. in this industry you know I, I took the stairs to get where I am everyone takes yeah. the elevator sometimes the elevator breaks on you yes <laughs> so I'd rather just be going up the stairs with my box of t-shirts and my computer <laughs> you know what I mean Definitely. so I would have told myself to not compare myself to other people and always believe in myself awesome yeah. thank you so much thank man you. Oh, thank you for hanging out and waiting absolutely you guys rock later